Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, number 306, Fatigue While on Testosterone Pellets. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. When people discover that hormone replacement therapy exists and they start to think, well, I wonder if that's something that would help me or I wonder if that's something that I need. And they go on your website and they look at your paperwork and they look at your research and, and all the data. They find a, a list of symptoms. And mm-hmm. do, you, do you have these symptoms? Do you have these problems? Then they get the, if they make the decision, they get their blood test. When the blood tests come back, they schedule an appointment. They come in, you review the blood test, and then you sit down and you have a very long conversation with them okay. before the decision is ever made about whether or not hormone replacement of any kind would be appropriate for them at, mm-hmm. at their point of life. So you were talking about the fact that the second most common symptom that they have identified when they come in, and, and this is men and women in their 40s, 50s, up to 90s, who discover that this treatment is available. And they come in and say, there's some really strange things going on with me. And the second one that they talk about, I'm, I'm gonna, obviously everybody's going to know the first one too, but the second one <laughs> that they talk about is fatigue. Mm-hmm. The fact that at this point in their lives, they can't make their bodies do the things they used to make their bodies do. They can't work as hard. They can't go as long. They can't go as fast. They don't have the endurance. And they, they're just exhausted. They can't multitask. They, not, and that, as, not as well as they think they once did. And I ask them to prioritize yes. their symptoms because I want to know what's most important to this person. What is their priority? And in general, it's either sex, which is the first symptom generally that people come in with, or energy, getting their energy back, which is the opposite of fatigue. So, and it may also be related to sex. And it, yes, yeah. it may it may be you related to that in your yeah. world. It would be so. Um, in any case, that's <laughs> so. That's one of those things. I think that was a shot. Yeah, so I can sexist, do that too. Sexist. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> in any case, the um, the fact that somebody needs their energy back it, it pervades every part of their life. I mean, if you have to take a nap in the afternoon and you're taking care of of your grandchildren, right. that doesn't work. If you have a job and you're going full court press by three o'clock, you're going, I got to go home mm-hmm. or you fade or you don't even wait. When you wake up in the morning, you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. Those are all types of fatigue that have to do with low testosterone that happens usually after 40 or in women who have their ovaries out at any age. So people come in and tell me that. And when I work them up for this, I have to always think it may not be testosterone, okay? So I don't just work them up and look for just testosterone as the cause. I mean, I'm not just saying everything's from testosterone. It usually plays a part if they have low testosterone. But then I look for other hormone deficits, like if your thyroid is low. That's a very common one. And that's a very common one to go together in the Midwest at my practice. It's very common, and it goes along with the timing for low testosterone. So that that's a very common thing that I treat as well. I sit down with patients, and I talk to them about... If they have a high cortisol level, their stress is so high that their adrenals overproducing, Mm -hmm. that causes fatigue as well. And then I also talk to them about their schedule. What do they do? Are they taking care of two parents that are homebound? Are they, or they're living in their own, in their home? Are they taking care of grandchildren? That's a caretaking thing. Or are they, now their kids are out of the house, are they having so much fun, they're overworking, you know? So all of these things play into what the causes fatigue. They're so tired. Right. They have, they're over scheduled. There's another one that, that on the list, and we'll put the list up so people can see mm-hmm. it, uh, anemia. Anemia is another one. We, see, we can see that on the blood work. And when I go through each blood test, mm-hmm. I say, I've done this test. You have anemia. That could be because, you know, you're not ha- for a woman, you're not having periods anymore. It's not from that. Right. So you could have a bleed somewhere in your intestines. So you're going to have to see a GI doctor for that. Or we're going to wait. And recheck your blood because testosterone makes you 
absorb more iron from your from your diet and increases your blood counts. So we, if it's mild, we can just wait and see if it comes up. If it does, it's not from a bleed in the intestines. Exactly. So we don't have to do anything about that. But anemia does cause fatigue. Lack anemia also can come from low B12, which can cause fatigue. So we're, I'm looking for everything that causes fatigue, and I'm trying to treat everything that that a patient has. Mm -hmm. Low blood sugar. Gla hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia, and that's yeah. another one. I can't really always see that on a simple fasting blood test. Well, it doesn't mean they're diabetic. I mean, no. you can have cycles of that. Like I know I have a friend I went out to dinner with recently, and he was telling me at dinner that this was a Saturday night. He had not eaten all day because mm -hmm. he was saving for this meal that <laughs> mm -hmm. he was going to eat. And, and that didn't help him at all. Everything he wanted. And at the same time we were having the conversation, he was complaining about aches and pains and lethargy and mm -hmm. and symptoms he was having and I recommended that he come see you and, and he did. Uh, and so but that but not but, eating all day right. is a myth. You don't save your calories because you're that is like a starvation situation. Right. Your body if you're goes used into starvation to eating mode. three yeah. meals a day and then you don't eat all day, then your body's is already scheduled for the three meals a day and you don't, it thinks you're starving. It throws a bunch of sugar from your liver out and saves you. Right. So first Use your blood your sugar drops, then it goes way up, right. and then it drops again. Which so, isn't good for your system to spike like that. No, it's a, it's much better if it just kind of goes up and down like this all day, mm -hmm. you know, with a meal. But this is a severe spike, and it makes you really tired when it comes down. So I tell people that in the morning, if they eat a lot of, if they don't eat or they eat a lot of carb, they they basically spike in the morning, and then keep every time they eat a little bit, they keep coming down. Lower and lower. By 3 well, o'clock, you're exhausted. That's why you don't exhausted. eat pasta at lunch. Yeah, you shouldn't you eat carbs, work, at, at, carbs at lunch. You should yeah. eat vegetables and fruit and fish or meat because that's the ideal power lunch. That's why they call it that. It makes you not sleepy in the afternoon, and you can work very well that right. way right. and not consume too much caffeine. Okay. So these are things that help with fatigue in general. I fix the testosterone part. I fix the hormone part. And then everybody comes back and, th I mean... Almost every single person comes back and says, oh, my gosh, I've got so much more energy. I can do all the things I couldn't do. I feel so good. I'm happy. I'm, you know, I'm able to do carpool and take my grandchildren here and do, you know, right. not everyone has grandchildren, but some people have late, well, we're talking late 60, babies. We're 70-year-old people. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. or 50-year-olds 50 50 right. still have some kids in high school. So, right. so they are able to make the college trips, and they feel great then. <laughs> so we've talked about fatigue before, but then a year later, six months later, that's a little early, but a year or two or three later, they go, uh, I don't think these pellets are doing anything. I'm tired. I'm tired again. Right. And I just think it's the pellets, the pellets are, are wrong. Not working. Right. And to I used to, when I was very inexperienced back in 2002, three, four, I'd, I'd think, well, maybe there's something wrong with the dose. Well, or, before you get into when right. they come back in a couple mm -hmm. of years, in the initial presentation, there's still a couple of symptoms that you, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. you want yes. to talk about. And I think we, we ought to cover them. Uh, one is uh, lack of exercise. Right. And if they're too sedentary, then their body isn't used to having stamina. I mean, you may have willpower mm -hmm. stamina. I can focus on a document. I can mm -hmm. work on the computer all day. But if you're not up moving around, you don't have any endurance and you feel tired. And you don't think as well if you don't if you don't exercise every day. I'm, yes. I'm sorry for those of you who hate exercise. I don't really like it myself. But if you exercise every day, you mm -hmm. think better after the exercise. So explains why kids run and then come back and study. That helps them think. And the next one is one that fascinates me. And we've done several podcasts on it. It's the fact that people are on so many different medications mm -hmm. where their different symptoms have been diagnosed and treated independently. And nobody's looked at them holistically or globally mm -hmm. to say, you know, if we go back up the food chain a half a mile and deal mm -hmm. with this hormone mm -hmm. imbalance, then all of these other issues that you're suffering from and taking medicine for and seeing doctors for and paying money for may be able to come off the table. Right. And, That's and true. you may feel a lot better because of the hormone replacement so that you don't have to take like blood pressure medicine. Cholesterol uh, medicine. Cholesterol medicine, cholesterol is, medicine. is one of them because 
I that's what I evaluate at the second, mm -hmm. you know, at the second or third visit. We look at cholesterol again. Mm -hmm. And if they've been on cholesterol medicine and now their cholesterol is too low, they can either decrease dose or come off the cholesterol medicine. If they don't, then they feel tired again because their cholesterol is too low. You need cholesterol. And a lot of like antidepressants, psychotropic drugs, mm -hmm. that if you're lethargic and tired and fatigued mm -hmm. can be diagnosed as depression. Right. And that can be a side effect from them. Right. So, and many people don't need their antidepressants anymore. Right. So we look at that again and we say, mm, that could be causing your fatigue, but we have to look at all of the things. It's not a one shot. Oh, here, you know, let's take, you, take some B12 <laughs> or yeah. take some testosterone or take some thyroid. It's not, right. it's just not that simple. It has to be looked at in a very global way because fatigue is a global symptom. Right. So that's how we look at it. But I'm when, when you say it's a global symptom, that means it, that as a physician, you're trained to say, okay, here's fatigue. What are the reasons that somebody might be fatigued? Oh, there's it's not like always 30, a simple. There are 30, yes. 30 or more things that right. could cause it. You have to check it. off on your list to say, could it be this? Could it be that? Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what we try to like do. Like autoimmune disease could be right. another one. Right. And, so, and we look for that initially. Uh -huh. So that's one of the things like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. When patients come in, we look for a high CRP, which is high inflammation, or we ask them if they have these illnesses and they're on medication, right. and uh, or if they're not on medication, have they been told they have it? If they do, they often aren't going to feel as perky with the testosterone alone as they might if they had not had that disease, because well, that makes you tired in itself. And then the last one, is the one that actually is the reason you and I got together to, to work mm -hmm. is you talk to people about their relationship stress. Mm -hmm. Stress in a relationship will make you tired. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it will exhaust you and deplete you. And if you are stressed because of work commitments and mm -hmm. expectations, mm -hmm. if you're stressed about money, if you're stressed about a relationship, then if you you're may, mad at your boss, it, it, if you're, you know. Yeah. And, or not getting along with your colleagues mm -hmm. or, you know, you're worried about your kids, one of your kids is sick. What I mean, there's so many causes of stress. But one of the things that you then do when you make the decision, well, let's, let's see if you need thyroid medicine. Let's see if you need testosterone. Let's see if you need this, mm -hmm. this, and this is also say, maybe you need some counseling, right? Maybe you need somebody to help you organize and manage your stress and interpret it differently, reframe your thinking, reframe your commitments so that you're not as exhausted. If you've been without hormones for a long time, then just the way you've acted and the way you have felt has affected everyone around you. We aren't just all alone in our symptoms. We spread them out. Right. So everyone else is affected and you can't just go, oh, I'm better now and have everybody else snap too. I mean, sometimes that does happen in a couple right. when sex is back, everything's wonderful. But sometimes the other people in your family need counseling with you as you get better because right. you've literally passed some of your illness on to them. Well, and, and you've taught everybody, you know, uh, triggers and, and signaling strategies that you've used to survive. Everybody's coped around those. Mm -hmm. So if those change because you're in a better place, you're in a better mood, they don't have to be as sensitive. I, I, I grew up in a, in a brutal alcoholic family, and I could tell from the cues that were available atmospherically when I got home, it was a bad day to be home. <laughs> And, you know, I didn't see the alternative. Of People who haven't a grown up home. that way don't know what that don't feels know what like. That's talking about. I, I know what that feels like, too. You can come like in too. a house, you can come in a group, and you can feel the radiations, the emanations emotionally that people send out. And if you resolve their stress and you moderate their health issues, there's an opportunity for them not to emanate those things. But sometimes they have to learn. And, and that brings us back to where else we were going, which is after they've been on testosterone for a year or, mm -hmm. or hormone replacement, mm -hmm. the, the different regimens that you put mm -hmm. them on, then they sometimes come back in and say, you know, it was miraculously better almost overnight. All my troubles went away and I've been happy and things have been good. And now a year in, two years in, I don't think it's working anymore. I don't think it's, the, you know, those pellets just aren't doing it for me anymore. Something else is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so you start to have a conversation with them. And what are the things that you want to check? Well, first, we have a list for that. We'll put that up first, as well. First, I want to look at their blood level. Okay. I want to make sure they're absorbing it still. I want to make sure that they don't. I want to look at all their uh, downstream hormones, the DHT, right. their estrone, their estradiol. Make sure that nothing has changed Those there. Are the fluctuation windows where they're supposed to be. Because right. your body is never a static picture. Boom. This is you. 
even like blood pressure, they're supposed to take it three times to get an average. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you different times of the day, if you take it, you're going to get a different reading. So you're not ever just going to get one stable reading. Your body's different every, every minute, but we try to, to, um, we try to make it more uniform by having first morning blood draws and, right. you know, cause hormones change throughout the day. So we try to do that and I try to make it as similar, although life is never, you're never same one day versus another, well, but the hormones. Just like sending men for a prostate exam. I mean, they rarely tell you, they say, oh, it's got to be a fasting early morning mm-hmm. exam, but they don't tell you don't have sex the day before. Don't ride a bicycle. Oh, for a PSA. For a PSA. For PSA, yeah. Right, and don't have an exam, don't have a prostate exam right before you get your blood drawn, which is right. a whole bunch of doctors do that, and I'm not sure what that's about, but but everybody has a high PSA after you do a it, prostate it exam. It to the test-retest phenomenon. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and then you have to have another test. Yeah. But but in any case, we when we are looking at hormones, we want to make it as uniform as possible. If, right. they're, if I look at their hormones and they look just like they did when they felt great, Right. Then I have to start looking for other illnesses. Well, maybe be. something mm-hmm. happened. Maybe they had another, maybe they had a car wreck. Maybe they've had, maybe they've had another illness creep in. They forgot to tell me about. Maybe they had some steroids for a bee sting or, you know, if you take oral uh, medrol dose pack or some kind of steroid or even a shot of steroid that is a, an adrenal steroid that can completely bind up your testosterone and you'll feel like you don't have it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had several people after I, Ask them questions over and over, finally got that out of them that they'd had a medrol dose pack. And that inactivated their pellets for a couple months. Right. They didn't feel the same as they, they normally would. But and we have that on our list, but you know, it's all in in risk factors and things like that that we give to people and they don't know they don't think about it unless they've already done that. Right? right. So you don't read a risk factor and go, oh yeah, someday I'm gonna have hor- I'm gonna have steroids and it's going to inactivate my pellets. You just so don't how, so think how about often it that way. does someone like me come in two years in and say, you know, you were you were a star, you were miraculous, you took care of me, and I was so much better. But now it's all faded. I'm not sure that this is what I need anymore. And you start to talk to them, uh-huh. and what you discover is they're non-compliant with the agenda, the programs, the medicines that you've recommended for them. They don't do those things anymore. Because because when it's a new blush first thing, yep. everybody's really good about, oh, Human I got to work out three in. days a week. You know, two years out, I'm working out once a month. <laughs> <laughs> it, I've gained 50 pounds. Yeah, I'm eating exactly. whatever I want. You know, I mean, yeah. seriously, you can gain a lot from getting your hormones back, but then you can abuse yourself back into not feeling good. You, and, you can reabuse or you can rehabituate. You can right. fall back into like seeking out stress, high mm-hmm. level commitment. I've got more energy now. There's no reason I can't take on this additional job at work. Right. I see that all the time. Overcommit. They mm-hmm. just go, oh, yes, 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 yes. I'll do all I can, that. I can do that. And they come back in. I'm so tired again. There's something wrong with me. I need yeah. something else or I need more testosterone. Well, that's not really always the answer. So we have to go through right. what has changed and that has to do... I'd say generally diet and exercise, diet and exercise yes. or, or, um, too much commitment, Re- re-embracing commitment, you know, psychologically, and I, and I dealt like this, uh, dealt with this as a therapist for years, people habituate to a level of commitment to a level of stress. And if they don't revise their thinking and they're, they're reframing that whole process, they drift right back into it. Mm-hmm. They, they, they come in, they say, I'm so overstressed. I'm so overstressed. I've got to break these commitments. I've got to get out of this. We work on getting them out. They get out of one or two and they get a little window mm-hmm. of, of fresh air mm-hmm. and they immediately drift back into another commitment. It's like, well, yeah, I can do that Friday. Yes, I can do that Saturday. Right. And that's something you have to watch for in yourself and in your spouse and in your children. I mean, right. many children learn this by overcommitted parents. And or then having, you, being over overscheduled kids. Right. They you know? overscheduled their, their the, kids. The little yuppie parents like to have all their kids be stars in, in uh, special athletic endeavors and, and perfect grades. And one athletic one athletic team a semester is where I went with that. Of course, I don't have an athlete child. But one activity a semester was all I allowed because otherwise you have no downtime. You've got homework. You've got You've got school. And then you've got an activity or a sport at her school. She had to be in one. Well, and that's and my then, college education plan for my kid. He's going to have to get a scholarship. Well, and that's most people's college education plan that doesn't work out. That's very disappointing. Yes. But, 
but but it's it it's very rare that you get get an athlete that can get a scholarship. Right. However, when we look at this, I think there's another thing that comes into this that I didn't really plan on talking about, but there's you get accommodated to a certain level of energy, sex drive when when you haven't had any any right. testosterone for a very long time and all of a sudden you get your level back. Right. Your whole body is waiting for some testosterone. It all of it is um we it's call like a it jolt. We call Boom. it upregulated, right. waiting for this hormone, and then it overreacts at first. Usually right. there's a two week window of too much sex drive, which some people find to be very disturbing and some people think is great and they want it to happen again. Well it can't because you have to go through starving your body for a long period of time to upregulate it so it's going to overreact. But it doesn't last that long comes down to your normal sex drive or your normal energy. And then after a long period of time, you get used to that. That's normal. Well, we call and, it phenomenon sensory adaptation. And people your who senses are... senses readjust. Right. You reset a new zero. Mm-hmm. And so if you you were low and you surged high, you'll reset somewhere in between. And my patient population is is just flooded with type AAA people mm-hmm. who are used to being like this. Now... That's not always that healthy. <laughs> However, pe- some people thrive on stress and some people th- need the energy to thrive on stress. It makes for good estates very often. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> After you're gone. and uh, But having said that, you're going to feel great when it changes from I'm so dragging to I feel like I have normal right. energy. Then you're going to be like, mm, I want more. It's almost mm-hmm. like an addiction. Mm-hmm. So... We don't play into that. We know what's happening. Right. We can't just keep giving you more testosterone, and that won't work anyway. More testosterone, you'll go over the top, and then you'll start making you'll make um, byproducts mm-hmm. that cause side effects. And so that's not always a good answer either. So we have to explain this is your new normal. This is you're going to have to kind of this, this is a, a healthy of normal. To learn to live a different life. Right. And, and if you do, in, in terms of exercise, in terms of diet, in terms of relationships, in terms of the way you design your perception of yourself, if you make those changes, then you can have change. If you don't make those changes, you go right back. That's right. Uh, and, and then That's the right. other thing that you were, you were talking about, when they come back at this situation, one of the things you do is run their blood tests and check mm-hmm. if some other hormone has gotten out of balance. Mm-hmm. There's an additional thing that you begin to consider, too, and that is they may have encountered some new illness or disease uh-huh. that wasn't present the first time around. Mm-hmm. And then I find that and usually send them back to their primary care right. because they haven't gotten as much blood work with their primary care as us. Right. So oftentimes I'll find something that they may have not found just because we, we do extensive blood work. I take my blood work with me when mm-hmm. I go from and your that's a really good idea. primary care practice. So, and so, so also, also I find that people who come in and say they need more energy, they're tired. They may also have had a parent go into a nursing home, which is I've experienced Stress factor, three right. parents going into nursing homes. I mean, in law and, and two parents, and that is very stressful. And going in a nursing home is just really not that easy on the caretaker. The caretaker, it sounds easy, yeah. but you're always bringing their their supplements, their diapers, their everything they need, washing their clothes, doing that. It's like having a child and spending two days, probably a week, taking care of someone else. So that's a huge commitment, and I ask them about that. There's actually a thing that's, I think, pretty generally available called the Holmes Rahe a stress scale uh, and it lists factors that cause a huge surge in stress mm-hmm. you know like the death of a parent the birth of a child a divorce <laughs> buying or selling a house uh, mm-hmm. getting a new job there are factors that cause your stress level to spike and if you get a cluster of those in a six-month window mm-hmm. you can really expect d- fatigue depression anxiety those kind of things as a as an outgrowth of where you are and not because your body's breaking Right. That doesn't yeah. matter what age you are. Yes. It doesn't matter what your hormone levels are. That's a psychological, uh, has psychological impact on your entire, uh, your entire body and mostly right. comes from your brain to the rest of your body, basically. So, so basically, when you reach that age, you get to that place where you say, I am aware. I actually was talking to a friend of mine the other day who said, I get so angry because I can't make my body do what it used to do. Mm-hmm. He said, I need to get up and clean my gutters out. 
And he said, I'm afraid to get on the roof because if I cut my grass, I have to go in and lay down for an hour. And, you right. know, I'm, I'm that fatigued. Uh, he's not my age. I'm late 60s. He's mid-50s, I think. But it's still a concern for him. Uh, that happens. When you get fatigued like that, something is going on. Go find out. Go to your regular physician mm -hmm. and then consider the possibility of a hormone imbalance and go see somebody that specializes in that. And don't talk to your trainer <laughs> about yes. all of Push the hormones. Push work through it. That, well, yeah. no. The hormones, yeah. there are some trainers, and I don't mean mine because mine's awesome and has none of this, but there are some trainers that I hear about in my office yeah. who come and say, oh, well, my trainer told me to, to go online. In Eastern Europe, they sell, oh, yeah. they sell steroids, which is from the corticosteroid family, which is not testosterone, and they have... I mean, I can't even tell you all the damage they do to yeah. both men and women. So that is not an answer, and that messes with my testosterone levels. Yeah. And so it makes people angry. It gives them outbursts. And they say, oh, that's my pellets. Well, no, that was what you took from the Internet. That's not the pellets. They just Web, want WebMD more, more, more. is not your doctor. Yeah. Go, go see a physician. Yeah. Have yourself evaluated. It's an investment in your life, in your health, and your safety. Thank you. Thanks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.